In today's video, we're going to be having a look at four wireless bed sensors. And what's cool about at least three of these is the fact that they're Zigbee based and fully portable. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. The sensors that we're going to be having a look at today are very simple to put together. Three of them operate in a very similar manner, while the fourth one takes a little bit of extra work, but it's nothing too extreme. Everything that you see and everything that I'm going to talk about is all going to be linked in the description below, and the video is also chaptered, so if there's a particular one that you want to look at, then feel free to do so. The first three bed sensors that I'm going to show you all require the Akara contact sensor. You'll then need the accompanying resistor or pressure sensor to actually build the occupancy sensor. The beauty of these first three sensors is the fact that they're fully portable and wireless and that's thanks to the Zigbee connectivity and also being powered by a battery. Another great thing about them is the fact that they're relatively cheap and I think if you were to build any of these three it would cost you just under £30 to actually build one. Let's get into the first one then and for this one we're going to be combining the Akara sensor with a car seat sensor. I picked up this car seat sensor from AliExpress for just a couple of quid. Now this one is quite a small one and you can get bigger ones and also a whole range of different sensors, but this is the one that I got. To get started, we're going to need to pair our Akara sensor with our existing network. And the reason that we're doing this is because we're going to be taking the device apart and it's just so much easier to actually pair it while it's still whole. You can obviously do it when it's not and you've taken it apart. Just in case you actually forget to do this, don't worry about it, you can still pair them. Once you've got that paired with your network, we're going to just pry the device open and you'll be able to remove both the top and bottom of the case and it should just leave you with this little PCB with a battery on it. Now that all that plastic's off and we've got our exposed PCB, on the board you'll see a small tube looking thing and this small tube looking thing is what's known as a reed switch. The reed switch uses a magnetic field and it's the change in the magnetic field that causes the switch to go on and off and that's how the contact sensor works. In order to attach the car seat sensor or any of the other switches, we're going to need to remove that reed switch and there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this. You can do it the nice way and manually desolder that switch or you can just do it the quick and easy way which is how I'm going to do it and you can just snip it off. This next step is totally optional and it really depends on how you want your actual final sensor to look. I'm going to keep the Akara sensor's body and I'm just going to have the sensor hanging off of that. So what I'm going to do here is just take a screwdriver and I'm just going to widen the hole by poking the screwdriver through it. That way I can just thread the wires through it and I can keep the Akara case in when I connect it to the other sensor. Alternatively, if you didn't want to keep the Akara case, I guess you could just 3D print another case or you could build something else to actually house it. Back to the PCB, with that reed switch removed, we can now solder on the two wires in the corresponding points where the reed switch was. And if you are making use of the Akara case, I would suggest that you slip that on now as you won't get another chance to actually do this. With those two wires connected to the PCB, you should be able to press down on the car seat sensor and hopefully see a state change in Home Assistant and it should change from open to closed and if you see that you'll know that the sensor's working. This sensor does work as a bed sensor but I ran into a few issues with actually using it. I found that due to its small size it wouldn't actually trigger on various parts of the bed so with it being small there's only a set area where if you were lying it would actually tell you that it's in bed. Because of its small size, it doesn't have to be a bed sensor, it could be a chair sensor, so you could put it on a chair and it would work perfectly fine for that. Another issue that I had with this sensor as a bed sensor was the weight distribution across the bed and the slats was too well distributed, so sometimes the sensor wouldn't actually read when you were on the bed. And the way to actually resolve this issue was to just place a board or a piece of cardboard underneath that sensor, that way it would press onto that and it would always register. If you wanted to have a go at this project and you've already got some Akara sensors kicking about, then this would definitely be the one that I'd start with, just because those car seat sensors are so cheap to buy. The setup for creating that bed sensor really is that simple, and the following two methods also revolve around that same process of taking the Akara sensor apart. The only real difference here is one's going to use a different pressure sensor and the other's going to use a different resistor. Next up, we're going to have a look at a very cost effective pressure mat. These mats have got four different wires on them, but we're only going to be making use of the first two, and it's the exact same process, take your Akara sensor apart, and then we're going to connect those first two wires to the PCB. Again, once you've got those two wires connected, you can start making use of the sensor in Home Assistant, and when you press on the mat, you'll see that state change. I found with the mat I didn't run into the same issues that I had with the smaller car seat sensor, 
As it was bigger, I didn't have the problem of it not being able to detect me at various points on the bed. I also didn't have that issue of the bed actually spreading out and it affecting whether I was being detected or not. One issue I did run into whilst testing out the mat, and you might want to make a note of this if you're planning on buying one of these mats, is that whilst it wasn't under a mattress, if I was to press on certain points, they didn't kind of pop back up, and because they didn't pop back up or lift, the contact sensor would still stay closed or still stay opened, so it wasn't actually registering the change because the thing wasn't lifting back up, if that makes sense. It's also worth noting that I didn't experience that issue when it was under the mattress, so I don't know if the weight of the mattress just fixed it. This mat was quite cheap and it's classed as a small mat, but you can get medium sized and also larger ones, but with the bigger size mat you're going to get that better surface area across the bed, but there's also a much bigger price tag associated with the larger mat. Carrying on then, we've got the Thin Film Pressure Sensor. The Thin Film Pressure Sensor, if you couldn't tell by its name, is a very long and thin pressure sensor, and it's a type of force sensitive resistor, otherwise known as an FSR, and just like the other two, when you apply or remove pressure from it, it will either make or break the connection. This sensor doesn't come with any wires pre-attached, so you're going to need to do a bit of extra solder work here, and attach wires to both the connection pins, then also back to the Akara sensor. To connect the two together, I made use of some doorbell wire that I had lying around, and just to point this out, you can actually make those wires as long or as short as you want, just adjust them to whatever size bed you've got, or wherever you want to place your sensor. Of the three sensors we've had a look at so far, this particular one is my favourite one. It's the most sensitive and it fits perfectly across half of my bed. You can also buy it in longer lengths if that's something that you wanted to do, but again, buying a bigger one is going to cost more money. Whilst testing this one out, I didn't really run into any issues. The only issue I had was actually trying to get the wire to connect to those connection pins, just because they're quite small. Also, because I've got an Ottoman bed, I found that when I lifted the bed up, the ribbon cables slipped slightly, and I imagine that over time they might slip out of place if you kept lifting the bed up and down. A quick fix for this one is to just pin it in place with some masking tape. Because these first three sensors are all based on the Akara sensor, they only really have two different states, so they're either open or closed, where open is nobody's in the bed or there's no pressure being applied, and closed being there is pressure being applied or somebody's in bed. And while that concept is easy to understand, it's not very clear or readable in an automation. The other issue you have here is the fact that because it's either open or closed, there's no kind of delay between it or there's no offset on it. So as soon as you remove that pressure, so as soon as you get out of bed, that's instantly going to change. And the knock-on effect this could cause if you've got something like an automation to turn lights on or off, if you slightly moved in bed and it caused that sensor to disconnect or turn off, then those lights are going to come on, maybe briefly just for a second. A very quick and simple solution for this issue is to create an input boolean helper with two automations. The first automation is going to turn the input boolean on whenever there's pressure detected on your sensor. And the second one is going to do the opposite, it's going to turn it off, but rather than instantly turn it off, you're going to set a delay here, and you can set this delay to match whatever your needs are, so it could be 30 seconds, it could be 2 minutes, it could be 5, whatever your needs are. With that done, you can make use of that input boolean in your automations, and this is going to avoid that issue of if you slightly move off the sensor, it will instantly turn off, and that's going to get rid of that whole lights turning on at 3am issue. If you wanted to take this one step further and you wanted to have your sensor states a little bit more readable so that the values aren't just on or off or open and closed, you could actually set them to be in bed or out of bed. To do this, you just make use of a template sensor and you basically just incorporate your helper entity and then you can just set those values to be whatever you want. Here with mine, I've set the values to be in bed or out of bed. And again, this is just a nice readability thing. It's easy to actually understand what's going on. As this sensor only has access to those two different states of if somebody's in bed or if they're not, you can only really use it to trigger automations based on the occupancy of the bed. You can't actually work out who's in the bed or how many people are in the bed. With any of these three sensors, if you wanted to, you could replicate the setup and you could have that on another side of the bed or on multiple parts of the bed. You could then group those sensors together to get a more accurate reading, or you could work out if there's two people in the bed, one on either side of the bed. So that's the first three done, and those are relatively straightforward and easy to set up and build. This next one is a bit more advanced, and rather than making use of an Akara sensor, it makes use of an ESP32, or you could use a Wemos or something similar. With this next one, I'm just going to quickly skim through the setup and install process. I'm not going to run through it in depth, but if you would like to see that, then do let me know in the comments below, and maybe it's something that I'll cover in a bit more detail. I will leave a link to the GitHub guide that I used to actually set this up and create it, so if you want to know a bit more, then go check that out. 
Following the instructions on Git, you'll end up with something like this, probably neater than my prototype here, but something like this. You can then attach any of those different pressure sensors or the FSRs that we've made use of today. So whichever one you went for, whichever one was your favorite, you can attach it to this. With that created, we can just flash the ESP with a sketch and that's gonna allow us to access the information from the pressure sensor so we can work out when pressure's been applied to it and when it's not. Using ESP Home, we get a bit more information back from that resistor so we can get a voltage reading and with that reading, when you apply that pressure, that voltage changes. So the more pressure you apply, the less voltage you're gonna get and the less pressure you apply, the more voltage you're gonna get. And what's cool about this is you can actually use that voltage reading to actually determine the weights of people. So you're not gonna get the full weight of how much they actually weigh, but depending on who's sitting on it, whether it's a child, an adult, or even a cat, that voltage level will change and you can roughly work out which person or animal it is based on the voltage level. If you're after a more sensitive sensor, then this one's definitely the one to go for, just as you've got that different variance between the different voltage levels, and you can roughly work out who's in the bed as opposed to just that on or off. The trade-off here is the fact that you're gonna lose the portability of the Akara sensor, just as that's all Zigbee based and it's all battery powered. With this one, you're gonna need to power it by the mains or rig up some kind of other battery system for it. Due to it using a breadboard and an ESP chip or a Wemos, it's also going to be slightly bigger. So you're also going to have to make some kind of enclosure and it's going to be a little bit bigger either under your bed or wherever you're going to store it. But again, that's not the end of the world. A plus that you're going to get from using ESP Home is you're going to be able to create that delay and offset within your ESP sketch. So you're not going to need to write those separate automations like we did with the Akara sensor. Modifying and using the Akara sensors is definitely the more simpler and easier solution. It's also the cheaper solution. However, there might be another couple of issues you run into if you do set up and use this method. The first one being it's a battery powered Zigbee device, so it's not always powered. So the device could go to sleep and it may take a couple of seconds for it to actually kick in. So that may be something that actually affects your automation. In my testing so far, this hasn't been an issue and it's not something that I've noticed, but it is one to bear in mind when you're actually setting this up, just in case you plan on tying any big automations to it. The second issue is the fact that the Akara sensor won't roam between different mesh points in your Zigbee network. The best solution for this will be to put the sensor where it's actually going to live. So if it's going on an upstairs bed, you want to put it upstairs and then pair it. That way it's going to pair with whatever powered node is closest to it. So if you've got a powered Zigbee socket or a powered Zigbee bulb, it will then route through those rather than trying to go directly to your Zigbee coordinator. If you do go the Akara route, you also get a nice handy byproduct of some extra fridge magnets. So that's the four sensors, but what can we actually do with them? Throughout this video, I've been referring to these as bed sensors, but in theory, you could use them for anything. You could place them under a mat. You could place them under the carpet in your stairs. You could place them anywhere that you want to be able to activate something by using pressure. Using them as bed sensors is a primary option, and it's probably one of the better ones you can do. You can do things like when you get out of bed in the morning, you could have your blinds open. If you get out of bed late at night after a certain time, you could have the lights under the bed turn on very dim or the lights in the hallway turn on very dim. If you make use of more than one of these sensors, so for example, if you've got one on your side of the bed and one on your partner's side, when you both get into bed, you could have your smart speaker announce if there's a set window or door open, or you could even have it automatically arm or disarm your smart alarm system. And again, it doesn't just have to be a bed sensor. You could put it in your office chair. You could have it tell you to stand up if you've been sitting down for too long, or you could put it underneath the carpet on the bottom of your stairs. That way, when you stand on it, it triggers a series of fancy flashy WLED lights going up the side of your stairs. The possibilities are literally endless. If you've got any cool ideas or if you've got any different sensors that you make use of that I haven't covered in today's video, then do let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Text-to-speech works great with these bed automations. And if you're an Amazon Echo user, you should definitely check out this video on text-to-speech. Or if you're more of a Google guy, then check out how you can cast your dashboards using Google. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.